All right, joining me now is Michael Santo, a foreign policy expert. Michael, thanks for being with us. There's some tension ahead of this visit to Paris over President Macron saying that there is a need for a true European army intended to protect against China, Russia, and even the United States of America. How do you think uh, Macron, how, how serious do you think Macron is about this European army? Well, possibly very serious because this is not a new thing. The French have actually aspired to have an independent European military force for decades. There have been efforts going back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, sometimes even combined with their old adversaries, the British, but of course both NATO members or a joint French-German army. There's nothing new. And it's not entirely bad from a U.S. standpoint, and President Trump is acting a little bit inconsistent here, because it would possibly be in some ways a way for the Europeans to pay more of their share in the defense of Europe against, frankly, the Russians. But the president uh, was insulted that uh, Macron said that it could be used against the United States, he said in a tweet that it's very insulting and that perhaps Europe should first pay its fair share of NATO, which the U.S. subsidizes. The uh, U.S. pays about 22 percent of the NATO budget. So it, it's hard to say, Michael, that the president doesn't have a point here when uh, an army is being positioned not to join the U.S., but according to Macron, perhaps to go against the U.S. I mean, I think the way he phrased it was incorrect and even obnoxious. Um, but there isn't really a replacement for the United States globally or in Europe. And the reason the 1990s and even last decade were so incredibly peaceful and prosperous is because the U.S. as the main superpower is able to ensure that global order. So you mean the way Macron phrased, you mean the way Macron phrased the, the comment? All right. That's correct. Right, right. Like, like he seemed to imply almost like against the United States. I don't really think he made it, uh, it meant it that way. Perhaps he also wanted to trigger some controversy for his own political game. But I don't really think he meant to fight against the United States because they depend on us. Without us, right. Europe is not um, able to defend against the Russians. Meanwhile, Michael, it doesn't seem as though there'll be any significant interaction between President Trump and President Putin. Now, just yesterday, the Trump administration levied additional sanctions on Russia for human rights abuses and illegal economic activity in Crimea. So it seems like this is another example of the Trump administration's willingness to at times be tougher on Russia than uh, the president's rhetoric suggests, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, it's almost sort of like people would describe, you know, metaphorically like schizophrenic. You have a president who talks about how great his relations with Putin is to the detriment, frankly, of U.S. positions. But then you have everyone else kind of acting opposite, whether it's testimony in Congress or the way that sanctions are implemented. But I, I think it is actually concerning because the rhetoric coming from President Trump is not helpful to U.S. positions. And it's hard, is very, very hard for... For anyone is, to it no, it. is it not helpful, Michael, if the president says, look, he wants good relations with all of the world leaders? At the me in the meantime, he is taking action against Russia, but keeping the lines of communication open. Why is that not helpful? Lines of communications are always critical, especially between the world's two only nuclear superpowers. That's important. And of course, the United States wants good relations with the rest of the world. But Putin doesn't want good relations with us. And we need to deal with the reality. And the problem is some of the allies who have fought and died with us, like the British and Australians, President Trump is kind of starting fights with, but he's never criticized Putin. So there's a very, very strange anomaly here, which is extremely difficult to explain. I, I haven't yet found an explanation. It's very troubling. I, it's not surprising that the Trump administration is taking a tough line on Russia, because Russia is the greatest threat to the United States. And the vast majority of people working for the Trump administration are very experienced foreign policy people. Maybe that's the strategy. Conflicting messages keeps them confused. Very quickly, Michael, what do you expect from the meeting between uh, the president and uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan? I mean, Erdogan, as we know, is, is kind of a thug. He's not very trustworthy. You know, he's sometimes been kind of threatening to both Israel and the United States. It's a very troubling uh, development. But then the embarrassing thing is our ally that had been more reliable, the Saudis, murdered a basically Washington Post right. columnist. This is just shocking in the consulate. So now we have two allies that we're not really able to trust at this point. It's like, who's better, who's worse? 
And it's very troubling because right. we've depended on Turkey and the Saudis for a long time as critical allies in that right. region. Um, Erdogan seems to be yeah. shifting towards better behavior. All right, Michael, so we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Michael Santo.